Hello everybody, welcome to the first video in a new series, Engineering Statics, or as some of you guys may know it, Engineering Fundamentals. My name is Clayton, I'm an instructor at the University of Alberta, and I wanted to kind of record my lecture notes for the upcoming semester, so I thought ah, this would be a great time. Now, full discretion here, full, <laughs> full transparency, I haven't taught the course since 2019, I am not teaching it this year, but I know a lot of you guys seem to like my videos, so I decided, why not? So here is all my lecture notes for engineering statics, as well as all the examples that I will show you guys. Now, another thing I really want to emphasize with you guys is even though we're watching the theory videos right now, in my opinion, the best way to learn this course is going to be through actual example videos. So in this particular video, since it's kind of the introduction, there will be no example video to follow. There's not really anything to go over. But moving forward in video two and for the remainder of the course, there's going to be lots of example videos. And I highly recommend you check those out because that is the best way to see the theory that we learn in an applicable use. All right. So full discretion. Again, I'm a big fan of examples. The theory is great to kind of introduce you to the topics, but the best way to actually see how the topics are used is through the example videos. Now again today, just a nice little easy simple video. We're going to talk about the difference between scalars and vectors. This is kind of the introduction to engineering for all first year engineers. So let's jump right in. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is scalars. Makes sense, right? If we're talking about scalars and vectors, the first thing we're going to talk about, of course, is scalars. Now it's a big scary word, scalars. You guys may not have heard it, but it's actually something that you guys have used quite frequently beginning all the way in elementary school, where scalars are quantities defined by a single number. Now, the key here is that they do not have a direction, and this will make sense when we talk about vectors. So some examples of scalars include mass, speed, area, and temperature. And this makes sense, right? I wouldn't say that my mass is, let's say, 180 pounds south. It may be going south, but it's not actually directed south. Same with temperature. I wouldn't say it's 40 degrees north, something like that. So as you guys can see, if it does not have a direction, it's a scalar. So it's pretty easy to determine what a scalar is. Now scalars are actually very nice for us because they follow the normal rules of mathematics. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4. Very simple stuff that you guys know and have perfected before coming here to university. Now where things start to get a little bit different, and this is where your engineering careers begin, is when we start talking about vectors. Now vectors, as you guys may have guessed, because of scalars, vectors are physical quantities defined by both a magnitude as well as a direction. So the key here is that they have that direction component. Some examples would include velocity, acceleration, and force. Now the best way to show that is to show you guys a little bit uh, through a map here, a little bit of an interactive example, if you will. And let's say that I wanted to go to Calgary and I wanted to go to Edmonton. I live in Calgary, want to go to Edmonton. Now, of course, the best route would be directly there. If I'm going at 100 kilometers an hour, or 100 miles an hour, the best route is always directly there. Now, if I were to keep my same speed, so 100 kilometers or miles per hour, but I were to take a little detour, but again, the same speed, we know it's going to take longer to get to Edmonton. And that's because the direction starts to change. So my component that's actually heading towards Edmonton gets smaller or larger depending on the direction. Now, the problem with vectors, as we're going to see and spend a lot of time with in these first couple videos, is that vectors follow a kind of different mathematical operations. It's not just as simple as taking one vector, adding it to another. We have to kind of go a little more intuitive into what is going on. So the first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to vectors is the most simple thing, and that is vector properties. So vectors are graphically represented with an arrow. Sounds really simple, right? Just an arrow. If you guys have an arrow, it means you guys have a vector. Now there's a couple of things about this arrow that make it special. The first one is kind of the line that the arrow follows because an arrow, of course, is linear. It's going to follow a linear line. Now this linear line is actually called the line of action. So when we talk about moments in maybe video 10, kind of further down the road, you guys will see me use the word line of action a lot because it's going to become very important. Again, it's just the line that the arrow follows. The second one is the arrowhead or the sense of the arrow. This is the vector's direction. And of course, this is going to be very important. If I'm dealing with vertical vectors, it's going to be very important whether the vector is going up or the vector is going down. Think about forces. It's very important when you design a building to know if your forces are pulling the building up 
or pulling the building down. So that makes sense to you guys. And the final thing which is going to play a very important role in these first couple videos is the length of the vector. Now the length of this vector is the magnitude of the vector, all right? It's the magnitude. So if I'm going 100 miles per hour south, 100 miles per hour, that's the magnitude. The direction is south, but the magnitude is 100 kilometers per hour, miles per hour. And again, that's going to be a scalar. So that's the key here. The magnitude of a vector is a scalar. Now, vectors are symbolically re represented in many ways. It depends on the source, but all in all, they look very similar in the end. So the mis most typical thing you guys will see is that a vector will be bold. All right, most textbooks have it as bold. And then in addition, most textbooks have something kind of over the top of the vector. So you either see a straight line, uh, kind of a half arrow or a full arrow over top. And if we're talking about the magnitude of a vector, as we discussed above, which is a scalar, it's going to have the same symbol as the vector, but it's going to have kind of those absolute value signs around it. And this is actually nice because remember, magnitudes are going to actually be always positive. It's the direction that changes things, but the value itself is always positive. Think back to speed. If I'm considering 100 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour is always going to be the same. You don't go negative 100 miles per hour, something like that. North or south, that'll start changing things, but the actual magnitude will always be positive, which is nice because, again, we have the <laughs> absolute value signs to kind of remind you. Now, me particularly, I use these two formats. I like the half arrow. I don't know why. It's just maybe it's something I was accustomed to when I was an engineering student, so this is what I will be using in my lectures moving forward. So let's talk about kind of the pain in the ass here. I kind of alluded to vectors are tricky in the sense that they have their own unique set of rules for mathematics. And those vary depending on what we're talking about. So the first one is multiplication and division by a scalar. So this is going to be very important. But luckily for us, this is actually the easy one. So we don't have to worry too much. The second one is vector addition and subtraction. And that's going to be the whole goal moving forward for the rest of this week. So this is video one. Videos two and three, they're going to be talking about this specific feature right here, vector addition and subtraction. And this is going to be perhaps one of the most important topics of this entire course. Because what we're doing with vectors, because essentially vectors are forces. Forces, right? If we're engineers, we're designing for forces. And if we have a building that has many forces, we're going to want to add them together to figure out the total force on that building. So uh, number two here, vector addition and subtraction, it's going to be a big one. And again, those will be in the next two videos. And finally, we have dot product and cross product. Now, that's kind of hard to explain, but don't worry, we're going to cover that. It looks really complex, but it's actually pretty easy, so you guys won't have too much trouble. So again, I just want to give you guys a quick review of what we're going to do. Uh, multiplication and division by scalar, we're going to cover right now. Vector addition and subtraction, that's the topic of the next two videos. And dot product and cross product, those will be the topic of week two videos. So video is maybe four, five, and six, something like that. Now, let's talk about that first one, multiplication by a scalar. Like I said, it sounds complex, but it's actually really simple. If we were to have a vector, a, and multiply it by a scalar, small a, well, the result is actually going to be another vector, b. So again, small a is a scalar, and capital A with the arrow, that's going to be our vector. And the result of this is also going to be another vector. Now, vector multiplication simply scales the length of a vector by the scalar. Now, you guys may be saying, Clayton, scales the length. What the hell does that mean? Well, let me show you. Let's say that we have our vector A. You know, it's, it's looking good. It's having fun. And currently, the magnitude of A is 3. So it could either be, let's say, 3 meters per second, 3 kilonewtons, 3 pounds, whatever you guys want to have it as whatever vector you guys want. And I want to take this vector, and I want to multiply it by the scalar 2. So my new vector b, which is simply 2 multiplied by vector a, all it's going to do is simply stretch that, stretch that vector by a factor of 2. So the new magnitude of the vector b is going to be 6, simply 3 times 2. Nice and simple, right? So again, vector multiplication, all we have to do is take that scalar and scale the vector accordingly. Now, the key to note, and this is what you guys can't forget, is the direction does not change. Remember that. So we took our vector A, we stretched it to form vector B, but the direction did not change. It's still going along the same line. It still has the same sense. So there's kind of the key there. Now let's talk about two special cases of this multiplication. The first one is division. 
So we talked about multiplication. We said, oh, that's actually not too bad. Nice and easy. But what about division? Well, it sounds complex, but it's actually just as simple as multiplication because division is actually just a special case of multiplication. So let's say that we had our vector b, and it's actually the division of vector a divided by the scalar a. Well, this can actually be re rewritten as 1 divided by the scalar a multiplied by vector a. So as we can see here, it's just a special case of multiplication. So let's say that our original vector a has a magnitude of 6, and I want to divide this vector by 2. Well, this is the same as multiplying this vector by 1 half. And again, that scalar just scales the vector. So if I'm scaling it by 1 half, well, we may figure out that it's simply just going to shrink the vector. So the vector went from a magnitude of 6 now to a magnitude of 3. So again, all we did was shrink it by a factor of 1 half. Nice and simple. Now, the second special case is multiplication by a negative scalar. All right, negative scalar. Thus far, we've all only dealt with positives. What happens if we throw in a negative just for fun? Well, it's actually just as simple. Negative scalars just flip the direction of a vector. That's it. That's all. So let's say that we had our vector a. It currently has a magnitude of 3, and we multiply it by negative 2. Well, as you guys can imagine, we have the 2 there, so we are going to scale that vector by a factor of 2. So the new magnitude, of course, becomes 6. But notice that since we have a negative there, the direction of the vector did not change. The line of action remains the same, so that's important to note, but the arrowhead simply flips to the other side. And that's it. That's all you do. And another thing to keep in mind is even though we multiplied by a negative number, notice how the magnitude, again, stays the same. Magnitudes are always going to be positive values. So yeah, that's it for this. Remember, I kind of hinted multiplication and division by scalar, nice and easy. And that's it for this video, guys. So again, this video, more just a brief introduction. There's going to be no examples for this particular uh, topic, I guess, if you will. But moving forward in the next video, when we talk about addition and subtraction of vectors, the best way to learn is going to be through examples, which I will have posted in the video descriptions down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will get, I <laughs> uh, can't talk right now. I will see you guys in the next video.